Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, since it's my fault that Nev is the organizer of the colloquium this semester, and for those of you who might not know, I'm the head of the teaching committee. So I'm responsible for uh, giving uh, this honor to Lev. So uh, this is the last uh, seminar of the semester, and it's going to be uh, presented by Lev himself. We need no introduction here. Lev is well known for his contributions to all kinds of, uh, uh, let's call it weird uh, quantum effect. And he is a great supporter of the many world uh, interpretation of quantum mechanics. And I believe this is what this talk is going to be uh, focused on. Is that correct? Okay, thank so thank you. Yes, that for... is one world where Lev supports that. Right. Okay. I believe. Many, let me try to evolve. This time there is some audience uh, uh, on the other, not, not in the room, and um, you are welcome to interrupt because I don't see you and I will not see on chat. But if something is really bothers you, please scream, I arrange, I believe I'm supposed to hear it. Um, so, uh, again, maybe. Uh, I think I was privileged to work on foundations of quantum mechanics from the beginning of my career, except from QCD rules in uh, Master Advisement. This is what I'm doing um, all the time. And uh, understanding quantum mechanics, I, I think uh, it's, uh, I, I, I got to the conclusion that the only way to understand what we see around in a way which scientists can accept that we have to accept that in addition to what we see around, there are parallel worlds. And uh, since physicists, I don't think, have enough uh, background um, to say what is, is it reasonable or it's uh, really science fiction. So this is why I was trying to go to philosophers and trying to write um, papers in philosophy uh, to understand uh, is it the right way is it a possible way to, to see the, the world um, with, the, with the idea that there are many worlds? So, um, hope it works. Hmm. As a standard way of people think that, uh, and any philosopher think, what is the impact of? quantum mechanics on philosophy is that we have to accept uh, that there is no determinism. And because first it starts with uncertainty relation, and there is a postulate that every time you perform quantum uh, experiments, the only thing you know is the probability of an outcome. So we have to uh, give up determinism. Um, the second thing is that uh, there is kind of action at a distance, a spooky action at a distance. But there are these uh, stories which people uh, are, mm, hardly accept of this non-local correlation. I remember my first conference was in Urbino 87, when after Aspect made an experiment, and 90% of people said it cannot be true. And we have this loophole free experiment a few years ago that kind of Today, I think the whole community believes that there are this non-local correlation, and if you have some entanglement, survive uh, for a while. Um, and uh, my advisor uh, kind of had this Ron of Bohm effect, which tells that there is a, even more non-locality in nature, not just the spooky action at the distance of uh, PPR bill, uh, but uh, we need to talk uh, to the talk about potentials, which are non-local creatures. It's not fundamentally not not local operation. So this is uh, kind of this is what we usually most of people will say that quantum mechanics has teach philosophers giving up determinism, exception, ex, uh, accepting action at distance, accepting holism of gauge theory. 
and the first part of my talk, <laughs> I will explain kind of even more why it is so. The second part of my talk, I will try to say that all is. Uh, especially, <laughs> yes, potential. Every potential is non local. Potential for me, it's auxiliary uh, part. It's only local fields acting locally. This is how I would like to see physics. And today there is no such thing. Yeah. And <laughs> but A is not. Measurable and A is not well defined. So this is why, why it's not local. Every I want that everything here, there are some something really here. And A, people since it's can be gauged out in every place. So this is for me not good enough. Um, so I won't try to, and the first thing in fact will be this is the last thing which I will attack. Uh, I hope I will have time to some other messages which I believe. They are true. Um, that first, there is kind of non-locality, which is interesting. It would be nice to see everything very local. No, there is entanglement. But this, I believe, is the only non-locality of nature. And um, there are these many words. Without them, physics sounds unacceptable. Um, and now, within this well, many words, I also found that something kind of strange when we talk about objects and minds, and then uh, there is something which is uh, maybe not what people could believe in the beginning, uh, because of uh, accepting many words. So let's start with indeterminism. Um, first, of course, it's defined that we have. Mm, uh, randomness in quantum mechanics, because we have postulates. Uh, but um, I think the best thing it's really related more to non-locality is this GHZ example, which tell us not only that quantum mechanics is non-deterministic, there is no hope um, to have something deterministic. We have this, uh, if we distribute three spins between three people far away, um, Zeilinger, who invented it. Maybe I should mention Merman because he made this three story. They had four story a little more complicated. And um, so, and they will measure spin. Uh, of course, uh, quantum mechanics tell us only probability. It tells us that probability for up Z or down Z is half. And it also tells us about correlation. It says that if one will get up, that all of them will get up. But this correlation, no problem to, uh, for nature to arrange them. For every triple, they will write down, OK, when you measure it, it's, this, will, this will be really up. And on average, they will make half, no problem. But if we'll start uh, looking on other spin measure, uh, that in x and y direction, then quantum mechanics tell us that we should fulfill the following um, uh, relation product of spin x must be minus one. Either it should be one down or three down. Other options cannot happen. If we measure one x and two y's, then the product should be plus one. This is what quantum mechanics tell us. But this thinks cannot be arranged deterministically. Nature cannot decide on each place. It, it will be sigma x plus one, sigma y minus one, and in every place. Why? Because it will make a product of all this equation. On the left side, we will have some square. On the right side, we'll have minus one. So there is no way that the nature will know what will be the outcome of a local measurement here. Uh, at, Local measurement x, sigma x, and sigma y in every place. That cannot be known before measurement. This the, the outcome of measurement cannot be known before measurement. So we need randomness. Uh, because quantum measurement must be random. There is no way to, to make them non-random. In fact, uh, 
Mm. So this is, I, I consider it as maybe a proof of determinism. The proof may be not so good because I kind of neglected the possibility of non-locality. Maybe when I measure in one place, I do something local, uh, non-local in another place. And in fact, randomness is not enough. The same example tell me there must be action at a distance. Because if, um, let's say, in A and B, I measure spin, and I get some outcome. Before, C was random. You know, it must be random. We couldn't have it not random because it doesn't fulfill all this equation. But after measurements, immediately after measurements, in A and B, it cannot be random because it should fulfill this equation. So we change randomness to non-random. I don't think we need to look on GHZ. We can look at maybe on a simpler case, something which is almost feasible to be. Mm. We can make an EPR pair between mm. Earth and Moon. And uh, we consider this uh, spin half of maybe polarization, whatever, on Moon. And we, it has some reality. The reality is that it's really unpolarized. It can have um, any polarization in any direction, or if it we consider it like a spin, it spin in every direction has equal probability. So um, if I'll offer somebody a game, um, he will get a dollar if it's up, and zero if it's down, and he has to pay only 10 cents for this game. This is a very good idea because it's clearly um, uncertain. Expectation value is 50%. So he should pay me 10 cents uh, for this. And this can be everywhere. It doesn't have to be on the moon. It can be here on Earth and everywhere. We just decide. Later, we'll look what was the outcome. In particular moment of time, there, is, there will be a measurement here. So I believe there is a reality of this spin. And this reality has this property that everyone uh, should agree to um, should agree to um, uh, to play it because it has expectation value now fifty cent to get. Now, if I here measure the spin because of the correlation, I immediately know what is the outcome here. So from this <laughs> after this measurement here, no one here on Earth. There is one second, so that there is a, after my measurement, no one will, will play with me on a game which will happen after because I already know the outcome. Clearly something changed here. So there is this um, immediate change on the moon, the measurement. The particle here changed something here. I think Einstein was starting, he was talking about the wave function. If you measure it here, you immediately know if it's there or not there. So this is more or less relevant, even we don't need EPR or anything like this. This is uh, this kind of. And uh, I think it's very difficult to accept. But with Einstein, he, in the, even he saw that maybe the wave function is not the whole story, and really something else will tell us if you will find it or not, we'll find it. Here we, we know that there is no more story. This experiment of the bell inequality said no way for local hidden variables to tell what will be the outcome. <laughs> okay, so this is the number two. Um, for reason. Now, in uh, first year, I think we teach Newton laws. <laughs> this year, I teach analytical mechanics and I teach mechanics using uh, action Lagrangian. And I think there are conceptual difference. One is local. Uh, even in the first year, we use potential energy, but this is kind of just two. And, um, but uh, in analytical mechanics, uh, this is a really, big, it's all global properties. But again, mechanics can be done locally or globally. Quantum okay. mechanics is- yeah. Okay, take the advantage. Usually we take it as depending only on first derivative, right? So not on more. In the moment so I have a potential, 
usually we take the northern below. In the moment I have a potential, and potential has a physical meaning, I cannot explain it by local action. For me, it's non local. So, and quantum mechanics, I have no idea how to do it with Newton equations. So, there's no theory like this. Quantum mechanics, we have only uh, theory, we have only this potential. Some of them we can also maybe introduce non local potential, but even potential itself, it's a non local concept. Uh, if it cannot be uh, replaced by uh, by local fields everywhere. And the fact that it cannot be otherwise was uh, essentially proven by Ronald and Bohm. They considered an uh, interference experiment uh, with a charged particle uh, is arranged in such a way that it always goes this way. And then they made in the, the same experiment uh, when uh, in between these two paths was a solenoid with magnetic field. But outside, there is now any field. The, the local properties outside of solenoid is the same like without solenoid. Um, and, but the result is different. So we couldn't explain our own bomb effect by, by local uh, action. And there is this uh, famous paper. And uh, what this tell us about what, what will be the outcome and this topological global property integral um, on this path. <clears throat> and uh, in fact, in Wikipedia, you can read the same thing, that uh, forces are not, uh, not enough. And Feynman uh, complained that he was taught wrongly because he was not taught, Aaron Obama effect was not uh, found uh, when he studied uh, quantum mechanics. Moreover, I uh, wrote an entry on uh, Aron of Bomb Effect in Hebrew Encyclopedia and put the same story there. Um, this was like 20 years ago, I think. And so I made the same message. But this message bothered me all the time. And uh, we'll see that I, in the end I disagree. But currently, let's accept. So now we have all these three. Uh, three messages, which I think most, if you ask some physicist, ask him, please give messages to philosophers, I believe he will tell this story. Now I will try to say it's not true. Before I will say why it's not true, I will say why I feel uneasy with them. Because for me, good explanation was, I think, people 25 uh, centuries ago. Nothing occurs at random, but everything for a reason and by necessity. And uh, later, what it is, like maybe two centuries ago, um, we have, um, I think people accept the idea of Laplace. We may regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its past and the cause of its future. An intellect, which at a certain moment would know all forces that set nature in motion and all positions of all items of which nature is composed, uh, if this intellect were also vast enough to submit this data to analysis, it would embrace in a single formula the movement of the greatest bodies of the universe and those of the tiniest atom. For such an intellect, nothing would be uncertain in the future, just like the past would be present before its eyes. And I understand this position maybe it was not fully in consensus, but was pretty popular at, at this time. I take modern philosopher. I think he was a president of uh, Philosophy Society of uh, America, and he's really considered. Uh, he's, I think he is emeritus now. And he also says that only after long and repeated failure may we entertain the hypothesis. That the failure to find the deterministic law does not represent a lack of imagination of feelings on our part, but reflects the fact that the nature is non-deterministic. In the end, she said that I don't think he saw that possibility. His view on quantum mechanics is not my view. But I think um, this sentiment that uh, determinism is good, that deterministic theory is stronger theory than non-deterministic theory, I think it was very strong before quantum mechanics, and it was broken by quantum mechanics. 
Without quantum mechanics, I think this view would remain until today. The second issue is locality. This is understandable, really. Uh, Newton, who invented law, which is not like this, was extremely upset about it. He said, it is inconceivable that inanimate matter affects other matter without mutual contact. No man who has in philosophical matters a competent faculty of thinking can ever fall into it. And uh, he is not alone. Principle of local action of Einstein. If A and B are especially distant things, then external influence on A has no immediate effect on B. So this is understandable. And something different is against all intuition. Uh, in fact, uh, there is no problem with uh, gravitational law of uh, Newton. I, I don't know enough history, but uh, if he didn't know the concept of field, Earth creates field, uh, and then uh, Apple fields locally the field. So, and then there is no any kind of non-local miracle. We do not expect uh, that uh, gravitation works non-local. We can explain it through fields locally. So this is why I was feeling uneasy with all these principles. And uh, let me try to refute them. Yes? If, if it's possible to put mute, unless you want to ask me something. OK, a lot of bomb effect. Um, I, uh, about 10 years ago, I, I wrote a paper uh, trying to say that we can explain it differently. Because the explanation of our own of bomb effect, we have this integral of uh, non and global property. The question cannot be explained locally. And I believe it can, uh, kind of, because it is true that there is no field of solenoid uh, outside. But electron, when it go here and here, it affects differently the solenoid. And if we consider everything quantum mechanically, because the standard treatment of our own bomb effect, solenoid is classical, and the vector potential is classical. But if we consider the source of magnetic field quantum mechanical, then we have to consider it quantum mechanically. And it's affected by electron. So electron from here and electron from here acts differently. There is some entanglement during the process, which disappears maybe when in this moment. But due to this entanglement, there is some small shift of uh, in the solenoid. And this shift in the solenoid can explain our own bomb effect. And uh, so the ABF phase is acquired by the solenoid due to local action of the field of the electron. And the AB effect can be explained without holistic concept. Uh, Yakir uh, accepts that technically I'm right. He didn't accept the message. He said that uh, for when I, uh, I analyze the examples of his 15 um, line paper, then um, I can find a local explanation. But if I consider other example with superconductor, with some other things, I cannot. And there was some comment, reply comment, and there is some literature on this. We kind of agreed to disagree. I still believe, I want to believe everything is local. So I believe that not just for this experiment, but for something about that, that one is definitely not to see the other one. What? You mentioned superconductivity. He said, one of the best kind of experiments on our own of bomb effect was by Tonomura when the solenoid was shielded by superconductor. And still, we, we have seen pi phase of our own And he said that I cannot explain this. It's complicated. Superconductivity is too complicated. I don't have a model for this. Even for this, I had kind of trying to had to play this correspondence principle. There is no quantum local quantum mechanics, but there is a correspondence principle which was enough for me to to get the Arano bone phase in this case. For more complicated cases. I, I don't know how to do it.
Uh, okay. Um, action at a distance. We look on this experiment, and uh, there is no way that the nature will know what uh, what result to give. However, the assumption is that every time I perform measurement, I'll get one result. If I will say that every time I perform measurement, I'll get two results, there's no problem. Single word assumption give us necessity of indeterminism. But I know but many words allows me to avoid it. Because it can be known that all outcomes will happen to certainty. There is no anything, there is no any randomness. Every time I perform quantum experiment, which has non-zero amplitude for some outcomes, all happen. Everything is deterministic. If uh, we perform measurement here, both results happen. Every result, outcome of a measurement. We see it, it's something microscopic. For us, it's like a word. So two words are created, word up, a and word down A. We go to B and then again another words, and but now in fact it will be four words. I uh, up A up B and uh, up A down B, four words like this. Uh, C, no more. Because there is kind of really this is this is an entanglement. Uh, for all these four words, the result in C or the fixed. Again, from the deterministic point of view, also in C, there will be two outcomes. But we need some particular correspondence between outcomes. We have to fulfill this equation. So for, in partic uh, for particular outcomes in A and B, the, it corresponds to a particular word in C. But no randomness. Um, action at a distance. Action at a distance, uh, we had the same story. We said that when we make two measurements, there is this re particular result there. But if we allow many words, uh, then uh, what is really happening in every place, there are two outcomes. There are two words created in A, two words that in B and C, they kind of connected, so there are only four words together. Uh, anyway, we, in our proof of action at a distance, we made some action here, action here, and said that something, some changes there. But if we look on all words together, um, there is a measurement here, there are these two words are created. Before we had this EPR stuff uh, type, we have uncertainty in spin. Now we have this mixture of spin up and spin down. But this mixture and uh, the original entangled state, they have the same quantum mechanical description. They, they are the same. Nothing changed. If we look on all words together, there is no change here. The same with EPR. It is true that uh, after the measurement, no one should play with me the game because I know the outcome and I can uh, win. So uh, in every word, there is action at a distance. But physics is not just for our world. Physics is for all words together. So if you look on all words together, before we had this EPR and now we have this mixture of up and down, mixture of up and down and the EPR, it's the same, the same thing. No one can know if I can perform a measurement here. No one can know if something happens and will know about this here. No signaling. This, in fact, uh, everyone knows even without manual. Okay. So let's try to move to say something more. If I say all this, not, not. Not good. Well, what can I say? First, I say what teaches us quantum mechanics that all electrons are identical. When we talk about classical bodies, we can say they're different. Um, okay, first, they're not necessarily identical. But even they're identical, they still can be different because they started in different places. 
But quantum particles cannot, we cannot find the history of a quantum particle. If I perform a simple experiment, a beam splitter, and send two electrons, for example, uh, they do something like this. And now I don't know who is who. No way. There is no identity. There is no diachronic identity with this particle. There are this, I started with these two, now I again have two, but who is quantum mechanics doesn't tell us. So this tells us that the particle itself, there are not too many different particles. They are not, this is not the essence. The essence is just a shape. So object is pattern. Cat is just because it's wave function, has the form of a cat, not because it's made of particular electrons and protons. I made of the same electrons and protons. So this allows, in principle, teleportation of objects. Quantum teleportation, the most kind of popular and famous thing, it's not that we move electrons from here to there. There is a bunch of electrons uh, in a kind of complete mixture here, and then there is a person in the other place, and teleportation just moves, change the shape. Again, we need some information, whatever, but anyway, uh, possibility of teleportation is because the object is a shape. People say we can teleport. Of course, we cannot te teleport humans. No technology, not today and not ever. Uh, but some small thing can be teleported. And the meaning is that we teleport just the quantum state. And the quantum state is the object. Now, so I say the story is in many words. In many words, there is a big issue, I think, which can put some obstacles uh, to believe in it, is the issue of probability. Uh, when we perform some experiment and we talk about probability, we say, uh, let's say it's A and B. So it's A or B. What is probability for A when only A happened? Many words from the beginning can say both A and both B happened. How we can talk about probability? I can look on an experiment. Let's say if A happened, I move in one place, and B happened, I move in another place. Can I talk, think about this observer, about myself, and trying to give a concept of probability. Now, I say I, this one, no, I will go both here and here, so there's no really meaning. There's a problem that both A and B happen. This one, probability of being uh, A is one, it's not interesting, it's not, you look here, it's maybe 70, 0, 0.75, but if I'm in A, it's one. Maybe I can do something like this. I perform an experiment. I know I arrange it, it's performed. But I'm outside, I'm not connected to it. If I'm not connected to it, I don't know the outcome. So I can ask myself, what is the probability that I'm in the world A or world B? In fact, there are some papers like this, which I think are really wrong, because I think there is no meaning for this question. This guy in both worlds. There is a one way function, and this way function belongs to both word A and word B. In fact, my first paper on uh, many words interpretation, and I think it took me 10 years to publish it, um, and I think it is important, uh, which I introduced how I can introduce probability in many words. Do this experiment, but. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a sleeping pill while experiment and ask my student to move me to room A and to room B, or just to maybe to move, to move the whole container so I will not be able to distinguish between A and B. After the experiment has finished and I'm awake, I might know everything. I know the way, I, I can maybe write down the all important things of the wave function of the universe, including me here and here. But there is something I don't know. Who am I? There is ignorance about my location. So probability of self-location in a world, this is, I think, the only way to introduce probability in many words. And then it, this replaces probability of outcome of measurement because there is no meaning for outcome of measurement. All outcome happens. I also call measure of existence of different words that 
and philosophers really hate this idea, but maybe I, in time I will persuade them. And kind of I have a new postulate. Probability of self-location is proportional to the measure of existence. Uh, it's a, essentially the Born rule. But before the Born rule, let's uh, I promised a demonstration. So let's go to demonstration. In my home page, there is a word splitter. It's really connected to quantum device. Uh, we can divide it two, three. Let's just split it to two. So I put here A, I put here B. And I know that there is an interface connected to quantum device. In the moment, I put split. There is an experiment. And um, the outcome experiment will, uh, the interface will tell us what is the outcome of experiment. Yeah. I really believe there is a word B, a word A. Well, B we will be here, we are we're in the word B. I really believe there is another word A. But I think here, how I can put, even I will put different weights. Now, as I said, I cannot talk about probability. I know A happens and B happens to certain. So maybe let's do it again. I can split a word. Oops. Uh, now I can, again, I really believe when I click here, I split the word. There are word A and word B, but I cannot ask in which world we are, because we are in both. The interface, it's really, it's far away. Before it was laboratory in Tel Aviv, but now it's kind of cheating. I use random generator, quantum random generator far away, which I'm hardly nowhere. So clearly there is nothing influenced me and you, a part if we would see. Now we can be able to enter one of the worlds, again B. Now I'm trying to make this situation in which I can talk about probability, more or less. So I will make again, this is A, this is B, and now I'll put it here. And now I don't see, but I see you. Something happened? Happened? No? Didn't work? Didn't work. So it's moved, sorry. Uh, let, let, let me move it here. Let me try it again. Work? Yes. So, for me, there is ignorance probability. Because there is one word here. And uh, since you move differently on A and B, I'm in particular word. I don't know in which word am I. So this is the meaning of probability I introduced. It always, always gives me. What? It always gives me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there is a probability that will give me all the time. Uh, we can uh, try it again. Strange. I think that's fun. Yes. We always get BB. <laughs> 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 I, it's inter again, you go to my home page and try it because. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay, so. Um, so let's go to uh, talk about this. Uh, what was done here, it's not the proving a Born rule. There is a lot of literature how to prove the Born rule in, in many word framework and any other framework. No, this allows to define probability. What is the meaning? So let, let's now talk about, uh, so I define probability as a measure of existence. Probability of self-location is proportional according to the measure of existence. So for example, in this case, and I'm, the experiment which I'm looking for it's an experiment here. What's the probability that I will get up? I can get up or I can get down. This is a wave function. 
phase function of my particle and uh, all my detectors. There are four detectors, two on Earth and two on Moon. One uh, detector is up and one detector is down. They're all ready now. So if I perform a measurement, after the measurement, I believe everything happened. Uh, not, every, not too much. There are only two words. Uh, not focusability, because when it's one up, another is down. So we have uh, this, let's say, black word, in which here it's up, on the moon is down, and uh, kind of red, uh, and the red word. And if I want to uh, know, but let's say I know this, uh, and I, I'm in this uh, special situation when I can discuss this, because I moved, and I know that the splitting also happened for me. Um, and then somebody asked me, what is the probability for moon up? And I say, okay, this is a word moon up, the amplitude here is one over square root of two, the measure of existence is a square, one half, so the probability is half. And what is important is that there will be no kind of wrong thing. I'm not supposed to send signals faster than light. So for example, I can um, change the experiment. I have the same EPR particle, I have uh, instead of uh, the same detectors, and this detector I will replace by three. I will split my particle in quantum mechanical way into three parts, three waves, and put three detectors. So in this experiment, we have four possibilities, so four words. But if I ask myself, what is the probability for up moon? I have to look, this is my word with up moon. There is a, it has the same coefficient. So it's still half. But this is what I think strange. Maybe not so strange. People uh, attacked many words many times because um, there are many people who try to prove Born rule and uh, people were not convinced. Every interpretation of quantum mechanics has a postulate for a bond rule in this or other way. So it's not strange that there are so many words need some this postulate. But it's somewhat strange because many words says there is no collapse. When there is a collapse, you say probability for collapse given by a Born rule. In many words, there is no collapse. So where is the Born rule? I said the probability enters as a self-location. So I need to add a postulate about self-location. But this is kind of strange type of uh, postulate. Matter for me is a wave function. And I have equation for the wave function. Universal wave function moves. I need something else in this, uh, in the, in this situation to ask what's the probability that I am this word and this word. Even I know the whole wave function, I still don't know this. I need some different type of. So, even if I will change, uh, so here everything is okay. I cannot send signals, but I can change the rule, and it will not contradict any physics I'm teaching. I'm teaching Schrodinger equation. I believe this is a, the full the full story of the world, and uh, this Schrodinger equation will give me the wave function, all this wave function. Then I interpret it in different. And I say that here in this experiment there are four words. In this experiment there are two words. In this experiment, these words have different weights. But I can make another postulate about probability or self-location. Why weight is important? It's not just counting. Why weight is important? I can say, just count the number of words and say the probability is proportional uh, in, to the number of words. In this case, there are two words. Each one probability is half. In which case, there are four words, each what probability is quarter. In particular, probability for this outcome is quarter. And this does not contradict any normal physics. The wave, the equation, the evolution, it's still like this. It's just what I'm thinking about, what is probability of my self-location. So this is kind of a new element, which you didn't have in uh, um, uh, in, in classical physics, it's, this, of course, um, this idea is very strange, and I don't believe it for a second. But it doesn't contradict 
uh, the, the physics. Because if this postulate is correct, I can send signals faster than light in my world. Super technology with these all worlds together cannot. But inside, I we live in a world, so we can we can do things like this. So, um, as as I said, all these things are consistent with one of this physics. Um, so the new kind of new light of mind-body problem, which maybe in time I will kind of close this because I, I don't like it particularly. It's kind of, it's a minus. I didn't see it before. Uh, so the first thing, uh, if you look on uh, Laplace, and he said this, uh, if intellect knows everything, what's know everything? You know, the wave function of the universe. So I know the wave function of the universe, but I don't know probability of my self-location. So, uh, this is one thing which is different. If physics is classical and there is one word, this, these things cannot happen. Moreover, this uh, strange idea, strange postulate, instead of measure of existence or born rule, if we'll use this just probability of, of being in particular world, it's just equal for all words, then we get some even. So even the probability, the, the fact that I don't know in which world am I, it's the one uncertainty. Another is what is the probability for this uncertainty? Thing? Even this is uncertain. So this is uh, my three uh, new uh, lessons from quantum mechanics to philosophers. And maybe if I'll write it in the summary. So giving up the determinism and accepting action at a distance due to quantum mechanics and mistakes. Uh, Belief in some kind of non-locality due to quantum mechanics is not a mistake, but the holistic element in nature are limited only in tangible. The fact that uh, all elementary particles of a particular kind are identical and the possibility of uh, attaching diachronic identity to quantum particles, um, the history, <laughs> history to the future, not uh, together with quantum teleportation procedures suggest that objects are patterns. We should accept the existence of multiple worlds. Deterministic splitting of worlds provide a complete conceptually different meaning of probability. And uh, here are some citations. Thank you. You can only let everything in terms of Hamiltonia and I don't understand. I know you that all the time you be uh, 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 okay. Let me say I don't understand all of this idea of the water. I have to say, are there different Hamiltonian things that have been the same Hamiltonian? Uh, can you formulate everything in terms of Hamiltonian? And we know with Hamiltonian set, there is always an algebra of operator, zero. And can you formulate everything in terms of this thing? So first thing, there are some philosophers, mathematicians who say that quantum mechanics is algebra, which for me, observables are really not important. For me, the only mathematical object which is important is a wave function. In the moment I see a wave function in the shape of me, I say it's me. I can use operators which will help me. I will use it for many, but it's not essential. I, quantum mechanics is not about operators. Quantum mechanics is about just about a wave function and the shape. I, maybe it's just historical thing. Um, just Yakira Aronov trying to kill Schenger picture and say everything is Heisenberg. More, more important, David Deutsch, who is one probably one of the strongest proponents today of uh, many works and made many contributions. He also shifted in trying to make it in Heisenberg picture and not in Schrodinger picture. Um, but I want to believe uh, that after he made this move, he moved uh, from many words to contractor theory. He was not satisfied with many words in this way. I think you cannot, in Schrodinger picture with the operators, when they change, uh, everything is uh, lost. So it's not, I want everything kind of a local picture, something in the shape of a cat, this is a cat. If, if I have, if I can find in my universal wave function, 
I can decompose it to stable branches in which there are shapes like cats. This is cat. Using Heisenberg picture, it's look completely different. So. But the Heisenberg picture is essential for creating quantum field theory, which is the only hope we have for local theory. I don't know in which way it's essential. It's maybe useful and helpful. People use this. Uh, usually, you, you work in momentum representation, which is very convenient because momentum conserved. But you lose uh, all your intuition. Uh, to write down the way my wave function momentum representation, I will not recognize myself in any way, but I, I couldn't see myself in momentum representation. Really not <laughs> Well, you have some uh, if I could, when you find momentum going, but again, I will talk in terms of operator. Again, there is no contradiction whatsoever with, between many words and standard quantum mechanics and all experiments with particles, accelerators, whatever. The problem is how to describe uh, what we see around. And the main thing, the simplest experiment, just have a beam splitter and two detectors. I run the equation, I see both here and here. But I you go to laboratory and I see only one. How to accept this? Is there is some kind of non-local action, uh, random non-local action, or to say, oh, there is another one too, I just don't see. And it's a very, mm. equation tell me, that um, yeah, I can uh, make an experiment. I can split an electron and then put it in different parts. They will never scatter on each other, so they don't feel each other. The same about me. I, um, I use my word splitter. I split myself to the left and the right and start moving here. The equation tells me that there is no scattering of uh, left, uh, left, left, and left, right. So there is no any contradiction with this thing. What is the advantage? I have nice theory, which is deterministic on the level of all, of, of, of everything, and uh, without action at the distance. So this is why I don't want to believe in many words. If I have theory with single word, which is explain everything I see around in normal, in a reasonable way, I would accept it. But um, so I'm working in foundation, so I know there are many, like, the number of interpretation is huge. And um, they all not uh, probably number two. It's a Bohmian interpretation, which is deterministic, um, but it's with action at a distance, so it's very hard to accept. Yes. Would it be right to say that you don't try to? Suggest something that is a reality. But it is a model, like we have equations to interpret what we measure and what we observe. We have a model to explain uh, intuitively what uh, uh, think in a more reasonable way what is a reality. We don't really look into, into splitting. And, uh, you can, you know, we also agree that you can always exist only in one world, but it doesn't, it helps you to describe reality if you have this model. Just passing more than that it doesn't give you more tools to understand the world. There is this relatively new journal, PRX. And one of the first papers, a big paper, they call it. Uh, um, many interact, interacting words. They called it model, which is kind of variant on a bomb theory, multiple bomb theory, whatever. I don't like model. What I see, I have experience around, and I want some to find mathematical, physical mathematical explanation behind it. I don't see it as a model. I see it as, I believe quantum mechanics is the last word. Of course, there is a field theory, but many words allows me to make generalization. If I have collapse, no chance, no, the, the chance to find a field theory on, of collapse 
it's completely and there is no chance there is no it has all kind of features which which are not there in many words no action at a distance allowed to go up and go to a field theory and there are different levels but it's still in the basis i believe to explain my experience of course it's through this uh, picture uh, the body and uh, the first there is a universal wave function or wave function or if it's to go to field theory. But then I say I have to decompose it to branches in which all macroscopic objects, whatever it is, are well localized. So I really I don't I don't see it as model. I believe this is what is. Maybe it's too not modest, and I know that uh, that uh, very and usually when people teach quantum mechanics, they start in the first lecture. We say, "I'll teach you how to calculate," but I don't understand, and no one understands it. I want to believe I understand it. I, of course, I might be wrong. I, I don't, I'm not ready to accept it. I don't I don't understand it. I don't see any real paradoxes. I don't see today paradoxes which people saw when, when they had classical physics uh, in, in the last in the beginning of the last century. <laughs> No parallel, yes. but he see many words. And for words, I, I thought that the outcome was B. Yeah. Is there another me that see an outcome A in this world? That's uh, the interpretation, right? So it's not like my conscience, my conscience has decided to continue with the world that shows B. Not that we both the countless thinking. There are some people with many words which are trying to say that there are many old words together and they kind of go and live in parallel. They are the same and they became different. In this picture, there is a real splitting and there is no meaning, kind of a coherent picture of what I will be in the future. Because I in the future will be many me. There is a coherent picture of my history. If I go backward in time, there is a particular history of, for this for this level. For a future, there is a problem. There is all this standard question. This is why I cannot say what is the probability of the outcome. I think there's no meaning because both outcomes happen. Who I will be if I uh, didn't, uh, make this word split uh, and apply my word splitter? Because I will, will be both A and B. So what to call me? Some people uh, like to call the consciousness, all of them, to me, together as me. Now I say me have to be local by definition. I, microscopic object, all microscopic objects were localized. So if I see A and B and move differently, so there are two objects now, two me in the two or more me in the future. I, but still, we can, well, I have to understand what I see. What we see, we only know the past. And here, no problem. Here, there is a good, well-defined history of the past. But you still cannot call the, the past. There might be that the past is not only one past. There may be also many past. Aronov uh, has another theory. He also doesn't like particular collapse. He says uh, that there is a final um, wave function in the future, which go backward in time. And then we look, two of them, the two-state vector formalism give us particular line. This theory has a problem. If the world is very, uh, if uh, time is very large, then it might happen that there is a splitting and then reuniting. But we can have some kind of interferometers with people when it's far away. So. In a normal situation, when we consider macroscopic object, we cannot have these loops uh, because uh, people like to call the coherence, whatever. Macroscopic objects became different enough so that they cannot reunite. These loops are not feasible. So, if anybody else has a 
another question for left is using positive. 